Good morning, everybody. And welcome to worship at First United Methodist Church on this third Sunday in Advent. And we're grateful for all of you to be here today. And like last week, special week last week because of our children's Christmas program, this week is a special Sunday because we have a lot of... <coughs> Excuse me, a lot of our music program to share today. <coughs> and little bugs in our throat. So I got a couple of announcements to share with you as we begin worship this morning. We want to welcome those of you who are live streaming with us wherever you are. Please note that we do rebroadcast every every Sunday at 6.30 and every Monday and Tuesday at 3. Cristo and Tua Yuda will be joining together for their worship service later this afternoon at 1 o'clock. And then uh, at 1 o'clock also, if you're interested, please meet here at the church. We're, uh, we're going, taking a group going Christmas caroling at some of the care centers uh, in the area, a few homes. Uh, it won't take too long of your afternoon. And seeing as how we don't have any Vikings game to commiserate over, um, we, it'll be a great time to be together, 1 o'clock today. Uh, women's Advent study continues on this week, on Monday. We have a couple of meetings. Uh, PSPRC uh, will be on Zoom this week. That's normally a, a Tuesday night meeting at 5. On Thursday, I uh, invite you to join with me at 1, I think it's, it's either 1 or one thirty. I can't remember which. I'll, not, I'll see it on the next screen if it pops up at any moment. And there it is right there. Uh, it's supposed to be really, uh, that's supposed to be on Thursday. Uh, I forgot to change the slide. I, actually, I changed the slide, but I didn't load it in. Never mind all that. Here's the straight skinny on the, on the deal here. Thursday, uh, December 21st, we'll be meeting at 1.30 right here in the, worship, in the fellowship hall. And if you're interested in talking about um, Faith Comes by Hearing, the, it's, it's the Bible program that we're implementing this next year to read through the Bible in one year. Or to listen to it. So join with me, 1.30 on Thursday. That seemed harder than it should have been. Um, then we have <laughs> First Council. We'll be meeting uh, later that night. And then Christmas Eve, just to let you know that uh, our, our normal regular Sunday morning schedule is still intact. We'll be here at 10.30 on Christmas Eve day. And then at 5.30 we'll be here for the Christmas Eve candlelight service as well. So... Um, one final announcement there from the cookie walk last week, which I think was fairly successful. There are still a few. Oh, thank you. How did I know? How did you know I needed that? There are still a few um, uh, bath buckets left over. Uh, free will offering if you want to, and just check in the fellowship hall. You can talk with Pam or Alyssa, and they'll they'll help you out with that. So let's begin our worship service by taking a look at. The faith we sing, we're going to sing verse 3 of Light the Advent Candle. Blessing upon blessing has been showered upon us by God. The lame shall walk, the blind shall see, the deaf shall hear. There will be peace and hope in God's land. Be of good courage. Behold, God is blessing and redeeming us. Today we light three candles. The first is the candle of patience. It reminds us to watch and wait 
for what God is about to do. The second candle is the candle of readiness, enabling us to look at our lives. The desire to keep, get rid of all those things that keep us from God, to change our ways and live as God would have us live. The third candle is the candle of faith, through which we behold the love and mercy of God. We believe in God's presence with us. Come rejoice in the light. God is with us as we rise to sing number 196, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Please join with me as we share in our opening prayer. With one voice, we pray these words. O oh Lord, you know the deserts and the parched places in our lives. We seek your healing power. Lead us on this Advent journey to the place of new birth and to the place of our redemption. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Let me invite the young Christians to come forward for a moment. Little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. So, how is everybody doing this morning? You got one, one week left to wait, right? You know, we used to we used to wait, and and I loved opening up the presents on Christmas morning. Especially loved it when we when we got a, a new game to play. And I'm going to talk a little bit about games a little bit later. But do you have a favorite game that you like to play, like a board game, or? And I know mostly now they're they're on the uh, video things, aren't they? But any game that's not a video game, do you do you, you, guys, do you play those anymore? What, what 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 do you play? Monopoly? Do you do you win that one? That's a tough game to win. You got to be ruthless. Yeah. And anybody else? Another game? What do you play? Checkers. You got to be ruthless in that game too. <laughs> Check. Anybody else? Another one? No. We used to play all kinds of uh, of games. Have you ever heard of the game called? Harem. Oh my goodness, that was a uh, like that was like 
31 games in one. You know, you, you, you had this yeah. board, and, and you could um, shoot these little, these little things that you'd lose in a, after about a day or two. <laughs> you couldn't find them anywhere. And uh, we had a lot of fun with that game. But um, I think we got a new one every year. They weren't very expensive. Uh, and the reason we got a new one every year was because we lost all the pieces to it. Maybe that's why it's good to have an electronic game. You never lose the pieces to it. But anyway, the, the, point, the point of games was, for me, uh, as I look back on it now, it was a time when, when I, I, could, I could be together with my family, with my brothers and sisters, and, and it was a good family time. Now, maybe it's a time we, well, okay, we argued sometimes about the rules of the game, but by and large, we had a lot of fun playing it. So this is a time of year when families get together, and that's important. So I hope that your family time this week and, and on next uh, Christmas Day on Monday is a, it's just a time filled with, with joy and rejoicing. It's great to be around family. So just celebrate that, would you? Okay? All right, let's, let's give thanks, shall we? Lord, grateful for families, grateful for our sisters and our brothers and our moms and our dads our grandparents and all those who are part of our family. We just pray that you would continue to bless us during this Advent season, Christmas Day, and beyond, so that we would just live in harmony and peace. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thank you guys for coming up. I appreciate it. Have a great day.
Sometimes it seems like I repeat myself each Sunday when I say that this is a time when we offer prayers for the people. That's a really special time in the life of the church because you have an opportunity to, to pause for just a minute to bring all of your, your cares and your woes and your celebrations and your joys and to give thanks. Now, I'm guessing that you've probably already done that. Amen? I mean, really, you probably have. But to do it together as a body is just a special moment in the life of any church. So let's take that moment. Let's come together and let us pray and storm the gates of heaven, lifting up those joys and the concerns, those celebrations to the Lord. Shall we pray? Yes, Virgil. So we're going to keep uh, Jean in, in our prayers and your family as well. Thank you, Virgil. So let's come together as we pray. Loving God, thank you for this, this time of year, the, this Advent season, which gives us the opportunity to, to get things ready in our hearts to take uh, these four weeks and kind of take an inventory on what's been going on. I, I know, Lord, it's, it's been busy. It's been, it's been crazy in some of our, our lives. It seems like we're, we're coming and going and we don't have really a lot of time to even figure out what's what and where's where. But it's such an important task to take a look at where we are in our relationship with you. And we just pray, Lord, that you would continue to strengthen us each and every day as we strive to walk faithfully, earnestly seeking after your will and your way. Loving God, we lift up those who are, are dealing with health concerns, and we just ask that you would continue to be with all of them. We especially pray that you would be with Jean's family during this time of tender moments. We pray that you would continue to strengthen them in their walk, grant them peace and comfort. We pray for all persons who are dealing with many different issues. We pray for those who are, are celebrating new life and those moments when joy and celebration is not a challenge. We ask that you would continue to be with our school districts and our people who are working so diligently to teach our young people, whether they're in this school district or in college, wherever they are, we pray for the students. We ask that you would continue to bless them and watch over them as they continue to grow in wisdom and stature. We thank you for our military, wherever they are in the world. This is a very tender and difficult time for them to be away from home. And so we pray for them and their strength and their courage. We thank you for their preserving the cause of freedom for us. We pray your blessing upon them to keep them safe. For those who lead us on a national level and state level, local level in government, what a difficult task it is. I'm not sure that we've each considered what that means to, to work in, in an environment where we have to try to please everyone. It's not an easy thing to do. So we pray for each person, Lord, 
whatever level they are on, they would, they, they would seek after your wisdom and your guidance. And it would seem to me that if they could do that, well, perhaps they could figure out where we need to go as a nation, as a state, as a community. We thank you, Lord, for our area churches. We're grateful for each of the pastors and their leadership that they offer, for the congregations that are striving to, to do what they can to share the message of the gospel of your son, Jesus. We lift up especially our Cristo into Ayuda, Pastor Angel and Lourdes. Pray your continued blessing upon them as they reach out in concern and service to the world. All of these things, most holy God, we, we just bring them to you and we lay them at your feet. And we offer the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray by saying together these words, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Well, if you'll open up your pew Bibles to page 1553, 1553, you'll find the Gospel of John. And we're going to be taking a look at the first chapter of, of that Gospel. We're going to be reading verses 6 through 8, followed by verses 19 through 28. Listen to what John has to say. Beginning with verse 6. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. Now this was John's testimony when the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him who he was. He did not fail to confess, but confessed freely, I am not the Messiah. They asked him, then, who are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Finally, they said, who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John replied, in the words of Isaiah, the prophet, I am the voice of one calling in the wilderness, make straight the way for the Lord. Now the Pharisees who had been sent questioned him, Why then do you baptize if you are not the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? I baptize with water, John replied, but among you stands one you do not know. He is the one who comes after me, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. This all happened at Bethany on the other side of the Jordan, where John was baptizing. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please join me in a short prayer. Heavenly Father, we've heard these words uh, a time or two during this Advent season and Advent seasons in the past. The calling of John and the questioning by the the church religious leaders and we wonder what does it all mean for us as we strive to understand our own relationship so grant us wisdom in our heart Lord that we would certainly find the way the truth and the life and I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my own heart that they would be acceptable to you O God my rock and my redeemer amen oh my goodness I was thinking about the games this week. I couldn't help but do that. The games we would play. This was a time of year we really had fun as a youngster, largely because of those games we played in such a large family that we had. Remember, I grew up in a family of 10 children. Board games were the welcome diversions that we needed, and uh, <laughs> we needed them desperately. And my mom and my dad, they knew that all too well. The list of the board games we had in our family were endless. Uh, sorry, go to the head of the class, Monopoly, Risk, The Game of Life, Mousetrap, Clue, Carom, Concentration. Remember that one? All kinds of games. We'd play them until we were either bored with them or all the pieces had gotten lost, and usually it was the latter. My father was very creative in making games for us to play, especially outdoor games. I, w I wonder why that was put your clothes on and get outside, you know, that kind of thing. And I remember him making nets uh, out of rope and two old swing sets for the backyard broomball game. He'd get some of the old brooms that, uh, from the paper mill where he worked at, and the coup de grace, he would bring home a, a new volleyball. That was what we used to play the game with. That was a fun game because we could legally, we could legally knock each other around and not have to worry about the older and stronger brothers getting mad at you. That was always a cool time. And ordinarily, shoveling the driveway was kind of a, a pain to do. But you ask any one of us to shovel out the backyard broom ball arena, oh, oh my goodness, watch out. It was done in a heartbeat. Yes, uh, the games that we played. They were always more special during this Christmas time of year. And I believe so because, as I mentioned to the youngsters, we were together as a family. It was a fun way to work through the new rules of the game to discover the best way to win. And the games we played, it's funny how a person can miss those times when 
that are brought to your mind. Games are, they're a part of, of our human life. It, it is so because it allows us to practice what we know and to learn what we don't. It allows us to experiment through trial and error and to find solutions to problems, to, to work out the best strategies, to build new confidence and skills. Plus, most times, games are just, they're just fun. Amen? Check out the television shows throughout the year, and, and that fact is apparent. And personally, I've kind of lost the desire to sit down and watch that TV game show from today. Um, I believe, it's my own meager estimation, that uh, that venue has diminished over the years. But there was a time when the daytime game show was all the rage, not like the trash talk or the reality TV shows of today. And, and incidentally, just again, my own viewpoint, those shows are like a total waste of time. Sorry about, if you're a fan, you're, praise God for that, but I am certainly not. But there's no comparison between those uh, empty-headed shows <laughs> to the game shows of yesteryear. I mean, they, they were just good times. Think about Password with Alan Ludden, uh, the match game with Gene Rayburn, even, even Let's Make a Deal with Monte Hall and those crazy costumes they would wear. Maybe we can make an argument for that one. But to be sure, as one looks back even further into the archives of television, and I'm, I know I'm dating myself here, shows such as I've Got a Secret or College Bowl. Do you remember College Bowl? You Bet Your Life and even the $64,000 question. They've always captured the attention and the imagination of people who love to play the games. So I want you to use your imagination this morning to see that the text from John actually has a familiar game show theme ring to it. In fact, the passage is mindful, as I look at it, of three game shows in one. The first up on your hit parade of shows is the show called to tell the truth. On this television show, three contestants would face a panel of nearly famous questioners with one goal in mind, and that was to find out who was supposed to be who. And each contestant would say, my name is, and then they would fill in the blank, and all three would claim the same identity. And it was the task of the questioners to reveal who actually was that person. They would have some clues to the person's identity and they would ask questions and the questioners would guess which one was the right person and sometimes they were right and oftentimes they were wrong. The priests and the Levites, they're going to act as our panel of questioners today because they're asking all kinds of questions trying to figure out the identity of John the baptizer. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent the priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? Good opening question, to which John gave an interesting answer as to who he was not. He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. The line of questioning continues. They asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. And while we know John's identity, it wasn't so clear for the Levites or the prophet, uh, the priests in that day. The, the confusion arose because John continued to tell them who he was not. So the priests and the Levites were the losers in this game show. Time for the next show, What's My Line? On this particular show on TV, one contestant whose secret was his or her line of work. And the star-studded panel of questioners would again try to guess what kind of business or kind of work it was that the contestant actually did. And similar to the first show, it was up to the panelists to figure out the identity of the person in question. The priests and the Levites, they started off by asking one of the most obvious questions, which showed zero imagination. They just said to him, well, then, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent. What do you say about yourself? I can almost imagine them on what's my line. It would be so foolish to, to ask him, what do you do then? Because that's their task to figure it out. And John gave him this answer. He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now surely, it would have helped the panelists to understand what line of work John was in. Not the Messiah, not Elijah, not a prophet. He simply has come to prepare the people for the coming of the Lord. But the panelists didn't know what that meant. So they desired to know a little bit more about that. Now, they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, why then are you baptizing if you're neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? And why are you baptizing? What do you say about yourself? 
Well, they do know something about what John does, but they don't understand the significance of what John was doing. And here again, John wins this game easily. He's now he's two for two, and he's about to go for, for the clean sweep. Time now for the last game show text, and this one is called Jeopardy. For decades on that show, the late Alex Trebek would give the answer while the contestants would supply the right question. This time, the Levites and the priests are the contestants, and if they get the right question, they're going to win the prize. John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. The answer is, who is he that we might follow him? Well, it's too bad the Levites and the priests were more interested in where is he, because that's the wrong question to answer. It's too bad our players don't win this game either, because John couldn't even send them home with any lovely parting gifts. They missed getting the grand prize. So what does that mean for us today? We're not immune to, to all of that in our lives sometimes, missing the grand prize. During Christmas time, the reminders of the real identity of Jesus are everywhere. But the world seems more concerned sometimes with imposters and red suits and sleighs more than more than just on Christmas Eve. We'll talk about that later. We are reminded about what Jesus came to do for all of humanity, for every one of us here this morning. And yet we're more concerned sometimes with the presence under the trees rather than the empty trees across the nation and the world. We're reminded of, of who answers our every question in life, and yet we, we wonder about how we'll ever pay for the debt that's sometimes accumulated by purchasing all of those gifts or how the deadlines that we have for the parties will ever get met, or how much time we do not have to stop and to worship God for the reason for the season. Friends, you know, to tell you the truth, the $64,000 question is not designed to place us in jeopardy today. It's a simple password that reminds us of the danger of truth or consequences. It reminds us that as the Christmas carols bring us back to, the, to our memories in song. And for us to name that tune, we just need to be in concentration at all times, not just during the Christmas season. It's important for us to be humble and to not think of too highly of ourselves that, that we are either king or queen for a day. Thinking that way could really start many a family feud if, if you think about it. But friends, I, I've got a secret to tell you. John reminds us of Jesus' identity, one sent from God, who has a very special message for us, if we are listening. It's a message that can lead us to the heavenly wheel of fortune, the gift of eternal life, where all of the treasures are stored. And the best news of all, that this, this gift, it comes to us, it comes to us free of charge. And yeah, you guessed it, the price is right. This Christmas season, I'm inviting you to be mindful of who Jesus is and what he means for your life. Because it's not what you say that really counts. It's what you don't say. So don't miss out on the grand prize in this game show of life. The everlasting gift of everlasting life. Amen? Amen. Let's pray together. Lord, we are grateful, so grateful for this gift that you've given us. And during this Christmas season, we are reminded once again of who Jesus is and why he has come. Let us prepare the way for him, we pray. We lift this up in the name of Jesus and all the children of God said, Amen. Friends, we give thanks for the offering, and today instead of singing our offering, uh, normally we would sing the doxology, we're going to sing this song, Christmas Sanctus, as a way of moving us into our final hymn.
final hymn is found on page 240. I'll invite you to rise and join in the singing of Hark the Herald Angels Sing. The choir is going to lead us out. final week of Advent preparation. I'm certain you've done everything you can to be ready for next week, right? Mostly. I mean, the baking is already done. Still got some cookies you want to purchase, you can do that. Everything's ready, isn't it? The gifts are ready. Everything's ready. Is your heart ready? I'm hoping and praying it is. Work on that this week. Be safe if you're traveling May God continue to bless you all the days of your lives. Go in peace. Amen.